pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium with your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Hi, this is Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is all about dynamic family leadership, financial freedom, and leaving a profound legacy for our children. If you want to magnetize your prosperity by creating real estate portfolio, then book a complimentary strategy session with me. Go to my website at integrativeminds.com. There, you can also order my three books, True Legacy Wealth, Creating Generational Wealth Through Real Estate Investing, also Real Estate Investing for Women, and Itty Bitty Book on Family Leadership. Our show is available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, and syndicated on RethinkRadio.org, OneIdeaAway.com, and Armed Radio. Okay, I have a special, special guest today. You're going to love her because I think she's amazing. She is only 15 years old. She's a freshman who lives on a ranch in eastern Texas. She enjoys basketball and horseback riding, just your typical 15-year-old. However, she is very unique in the fact that she started real estate investing at 12 years old. And she's here today to talk about how she got into it and hopefully inspire all the parents and kids out there that the best time to start investing is now and that anyone can do it at any age. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Nina Kempner. Hi, Nina. Hi, Jackie. (laughs) I know you're a little nervous, probably your first interview, so we're just going to have fun here. (laughs) <laughs> you were 12. So that was three years ago when you, you bought your first property. I was actually 11. Oh, wow. Before I turned 12. <laughs> okay. So tell us, you were, here you are at 11 where most kids are just thinking about sports and hanging out with their friends. What made you decide real estate investing? I really had some of the same thoughts like you were thinking. Um I was really just brought around with my parents and what they did. Uh, I was brought to Memphis, which is where my property is. I just got to see like behind the scenes where they were learning about it and talking about it. And I found it pretty interesting. And that kind of sparked my own interest. I thought it was pretty cool what they were doing with their rental properties and just real estate in general. So that's where I decided that I would want to try that. (laughs) And what made you decide which property you wanted in Memphis? How did you go that process? So uh, we actually went and looked around at a few properties and they all needed to be uh, restored. But I just kind of walked in on that one property and I thought it was my favorite of all of them. I'm not really sure why, but um, it was in a really nice neighborhood with lots of trees. And I just kind of liked how it looked, just kind of the vibe it gave me. And so, uh, yeah, and then uh, they remodeled it and it's gone up for rent. And ever since then, it's been doing great. So tell us about the property. It's a four bedroom house in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, It's located in a pretty small neighborhood. It's really nice, got a nice vibe, like I said before, and it's just very cute. It's got like a little brick exterior and it's just a really cute house, the nice backyard and a shed and everything. So So that was probably quite a process to learn from deciding which property you wanted and then acquiring it. And it's been what, like, three, four years now. Give us some insight on what you learned in this process. Well, I learned quite a few things, really. The biggest thing that I really liked was how I could um, create income, but I didn't really have to be there or do that work, you know, in the process of it, and I could still get it. So I have like my own little bank account where it goes, and then I'm saving that for college and later in life and things like that. So you get money every month, and you you put it in that bank account for college. Do you get to take some of that money for fun out? Um, I don't actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like to keep it there, but um, yeah. 
Are you learning about the paperwork process also while you're involved with property management and things? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm not too familiar with it yet, but I kind of got to go through the process of like looking over the property and just seeing it. Since I haven't really done like uh, it's my only property and I got it when I was 11, I've really just looked over um, what my parents do, my dad in particular with his uh, own properties and his new properties as he goes. And I just kind of hear about the processes that he goes through and getting them and uh, looking over them and everything like that. Do you get a chance to meet the property manager and the people that rehab it? Yes. So I met the people who showed us around and it was actually pretty fun. They brought someone who filmed uh, us looking around too. And that was kind of cool <laughs> to be followed around by uh, a camera. And it was just a really cool experience. I got to meet them and the people who were uh, remodeling it and everything like that. Do you meet the tenants at all or does the property manager deal with all of that? I don't. The property manager. <laughs> do you ever talk to the property manager? Yes, I do. <laughs> Well, and, through my dad, though. <laughs> through your dad. <laughs> so he's helping you in the whole process then? Yes, he is. He's walking me through it, making me more familiar with it. And, so. <laughs> and, and that's the one thing that we on this radio show and also through the True Legacy Wealth Program, we want to help families do is stay connected in this way. So that way you and your dad have something to talk about when you're together. Would you do it again? Yes, for sure. I plan to do that later, um, have quite a few properties. And yeah, I'm hoping to make that kind of a big thing. Okay. Business later on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're an inspiration. Where do you think you're going to go from here? I plan to finish out high school, keep the one property that I have right now, just kind of going through what my parents go through. If they go to any seminars or anything like that, I like to go to those as well just kind of hearing and being there when they go and do their thing. So I can kind of learn about the day-to-day -day processes. And um, I plan to go to college and hoping to go into ag and engineering and business. And then after that, I'm probably going to go to law school. So, Wow. What's your plan for buying your next property? I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> probably somewhere around college, somewhere around there. Yeah. What advice would you give to parents who may think their kids are too young to invest? I would say don't underestimate your kids. Um, just kind of talk to them. Not really. It doesn't really have to be like a teaching process right at the start, you know, maybe just kind of doing what you do around them so they can kind of pitch in and hear what's going on. Um, that's kind of what sparked my interest. Or um, I remember at first when I was quite younger, um, my parents would go to a hotel and then the seminar would be held in that hotel and I would just kind of go around and go for like the swimming pool or things like that. But then I would also get to walk with them to the seminars. And I also thought that was really cool because I loved seeing like all the people dress up in the suits and everything. And I liked how they had the, um, the, the lanyards and with their names and everything. And I thought it was really cool. So I kind of wanted to have my own lanyard. And I remember um, in my first one, they wrote it on with a Sharpie and they let me wear it. And I thought it was so cool walking around with it. And so that's how you started learning was just going with your parents to these seminars. Yeah. What advice would you give kids who want to learn more about real estate investing? Um, just go for it. I mean, if you're interested in it, that's really cool. Most kids aren't. So I recommend like learning more about it. If your school offers any business classes, take those. Just kind of ask your parents about it or any family that are interested in it or um, anything like that. And if they're not interested, then wait until you're a bit older and just kind of look into that yourself or find someone who is yeah, just kind of branch out and look around, read books. Are you still involved in learning more about real estate right now? Or are you probably too busy being a teenager? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I do still kind of do it a bit. Um, my dad used to actually pick me up for lunch some days um, during school days. And so we would just kind of talk like, during my lunch period while I was eating, he'd tell me about like what went on that day in the business and what everyone did and how much income came in and um, properties that are sold and things like that. So um, just kind of hearing about it made me more familiar with the with what goes on day to day. That's really interesting. Not a lot of parents are talking to their kids about that. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think that helped sparked your interest more in investing? 
Yes, it did. I really liked it because I plan to uh, work in the family business later on. It's kind of more comforting to me to kind of get familiarized with it now. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting to me. I like knowing like who everyone is and what goes on and what kind of things are being created and stuff. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So I want to talk about your school project, but before I do, I want to tell the listener, Nina's dad is Maurice Kempner. Her dad and I co-authored the book, True Legacy Wealth, Creating Generational Wealth Through Real Estate Investing. And that's one reason why we brought Nina on, because Maurice walks the talks and talks the walk, whatever you want to say that. What happened was Nina's school did a school project on our book. So tell us what happened and how that worked out. So um, I'm a freshman in high school and with high school, they start to offer more classes. So one of those classes are um, business classes. So I decided to take Money Matters. Within that, my dad uh, introduced himself to the teacher and the teacher was very interested. He read his book or your book and he thought it was really interesting and it would be a nice project for those who wanted to kind of branch out and do it because it's an elective. So not everyone is completely, you know, interested in it. So he took the about five or six kids who were um, pretty interested in business in general. And he moved us to um, a different room and it had like this long table with all these business chairs or business chair, office chairs. We just kind of sat around there. We had each of our own copies of a book and a binder and basically what the project was, was to go through the chapters and write uh, questions as if it was a um, textbook in school. So we'd go through and we'd read it and we'd type up our own questions about the book and everything like that. And we'd um, make it to our own textbook. And that was the main goal. So what did the team learn? Overall, I mean, we just kind of learned how to um, really talk and communicate with one another. Um, it was pretty interesting to read that with everyone else to kind of see what they thought about the subject and everything, because I've kind of grown up with it. So I knew like already what was kind of in the book and everything like that. So it was really interesting to see everyone's own opinions on it and what they thought of it and everything like that. And what were just, some of the opinions or thoughts? Um, I don't really remember any specific ones, but I remember like a lot of people took like different things um, to their own ways or they kind of related them to their lives. And uh, I know like the biggest thing was they related uh, wealth to sports players and uh, business people as well. So with the saying that my dad always tells me about um, how real wealth is really like your assets and the people that you know and what you know. So if you took a sports player who has a lot of money and you stripped him of all the money and everything like that, then what would happen compared to a businessman who lost all of his money in home and everything like that and how he would get back up to where he was before because of the people that he knows and the things that he learned about business and income and money. Wealth isn't just money. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was interesting to see that because um, they didn't know that of course. And so um, just kind of seeing them learn about it and kind of understand it better was kind of interesting too. So yeah, it's great to have those aha moments to kind of broaden your you're thinking a little bit. You're an inspiration to your classmate too. <laughs> well, thank you, Nina. I'm going to have your dad back on to kind of explain the legality of it. I'm sure some of the parents are wondering how legally you can hold properties. But I want to say you are in a great, amazing interviewee, even though you, I know you're probably very nervous, but you did awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show and we'll keep up to date and maybe in a couple of years, we'll see where you are. Yes, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to interview Nina. She sure. is uh, a wonderful, wonderful teenager, uh, not just for what she's done, but I can tell she has a beautiful soul, comes from great parenting. It's good for her to do stuff like this. It gives her experience, uh, good business experience. I'm very grateful for that you gave her the opportunity, Jackie. One of the things I wanted you to come on was parents are probably wondering, well, how is an 11-year-old or 12-year-old able to hold 
property in their name legally. And since you're an attorney, yeah. So what happens is there's a, a uniform uniform gift to minors or a uniform transfer to minor act in most states. It's basically a variation of the same theme. Uh, these are just laws that have been made up over time in the country to so that when so parents have certain responsibilities when they handle their children's money. So if they're minors, when they get money, they can't make legal contracts or, or hold property or do anything until they're 18. So under this act, you have certain responsibilities. So she had some inheritance money from her grandmother on her mother's side, and we use that money to buy the rental property, and then we have certain responsibilities under this act to manage it well for her until she's an adult, and then in which case at that time it belongs to her. So a lot of times you can title it in their name with your name on there under the Uniform Transfer to Minors or Uniform Gift to Minors Act of your state or whatever, wherever state that property is, or you can just have it in your name and make sure you manage it well for them, and then that's basically how you do it. Did you take a loan out for this property, or did she pay it in all cash? Yeah, so we put her money as the down payment, mm -hmm. and then uh, we were on the loan for, we just took out a regular loan on this particular property. There's different ways to finance it. On this particular property, we just took out a regular loan. It's with Wells Fargo Bank. And uh, we, so we qualified for it. We're responsible for that and everything. And then she put most of the down payment down. Is her name on the loan or can it be in the loan? No, it can't be on the loan until she's old enough. So eventually okay. when she's old enough, we can transfer all that stuff over to her name directly. Can she be on title though? You could, I think, in some states put her on title. Uh, we, uh, as under this Uniform Transfer to Minor Act with the parent's name on there or whatever, but we've got it in an entity, uh, okay. an LLC. So, and then the LLC, there's everything is worked out in there. We're just trustees, so to speak, over her money. And part of her money is in an ownership interest in an LLC that owns the property. So then so definitely so you're talking about it's, you have to create an LLC. You don't have to. You can you can have it uh, just privately owned in people's names. That's fine. You just have certain duties under the law when you handle your children's money of what you can and can't do with it. So, for example, you're legally required to support your children. So you can't use their money to support them. You can use their money to do other things like pay for vacations or Christmas uh, gifts, things like that. That's, for example, a tax strategy. You can have your children earn money and they can earn up to a certain amount where they wouldn't be taxed, let's say. The money is then shifted to them and then the money can be used to do things for their benefit as long as it's not for their support, you see. Okay. And then it's a way to have tax-free money that you use to do things for them while they're younger or you can use it to, to do investments like real estate, that kind of thing. So support, I would think, is like, Food, water, and shelter. Oh, shelter, yeah. So you couldn't use their money to pay part of the mortgage or to buy them food or dinner or anything like that. Christmas presents, uh, horseback riding lessons, um, vacations, things like that. For, educational. <laughs> and including real estate investing. Yeah, yeah and, I, and that's what I think is a good thing to do is put their money in some kind of an asset that's durable and is going to last, and then when they become an adult, they, they'll have it. Yeah. Don't spend it on Christmas uh, presents or, or other things. Use it, build it up, help them invest. Even if you put it in a property and they don't have enough for all the down payment, they do some of it. You can just keep a record of their share of it and then make sure they get it down the road. Okay. Yeah, I think the great thing about the property that we have in our program to Legacy Wealth is that they're around $100,000. I think some properties are even around 75000 So with very little money down, your children can get started. Yeah, it's like buying a car. And the payments on them are anywhere from like two to 600 800 bucks at the most a month well, after you put a down payment when you do conventional financing. Another way, as on some of the other programs we've done, is they can use equity from their home, a home equity line of credit, and they just pay, pay for the property with a check right out of their home equity line of credit. 
and just pay the property off there. Yeah. And then they don't even have to get a loan for the rental property. Too. And the nice thing is the tenants are paying the, the loan off. Yeah. Pretty see, pretty there's pretty. all these main sources of income from, from real estate. So you get the cash flow from, from the rent coming in where after the, all the expenses and everything, you get cash coming into your pocket every month, positive cash flow. I mean, if you structure it right, you get good properties. Then you get appreciation on the property. That's where the equity in the property increases over time due to appreciation in the value of the property. And then you get amortization if you financed it. So if you financed it, part of the mortgage pay, the, the mortgage payment that's paid by the tenant, basically, because they pay you the rent and you use that to pay the mortgage payment. Part of that goes to principal and that's added to your equity. So you got principal increase, you got appreciation and then you got cash flow after all those expenses in your pocket yep what do you think of nina that she started doing this has she grown in any ways because she's kind of stepped out yeah so i think nina i mean she's always around uh, listening to what's going on we we give our kids bits and pieces as much as they can take into their answer we don't try to force feed them and they all understand what's going on and they see what it means uh, everything that happens in the business is important to them. We give them every bit of information we have that will help them. We show them connections and things so that all that stuff isn't lost when we die. And as they get older and older, this becomes more and more important and they get more into it. That's what we do. And they're all uh, interested in the business it's important to them and it gives everybody a common cause in the family so it makes the family closer so the main reason we do all this stuff is for the benefit of the family not just in a financial way but in a, an emotional or personal way to make the family stronger and better and closer everybody uh, instead of making up an excuse to visit or come together say at christmas or thanksgiving there are a lot of reasons to talk to each other yeah, like she was saying, you she was sitting in the car with you during lunch, and you would yep. talk about what's what's going on with the business. Well, we do it all, not just there, but all kinds of places, like what she was mentioning in Memphis or going to the seminars. And yeah. we give them as much as they're interested, as much as they can take. And then usually over time, as they get older, like some of our older kids are actually working in the business now, they get more and more interested, and they're more and more capable, and they do more and more. It's a learning process. Like anything, uh, it takes, like you can be in a career or be in a business your whole life and you never stop learning. So it's a con constant learning process. I just think the sooner you can start, the better. And as soon as you can get kids to, to understand the concept of multi-generational wealth and passing on information, knowledge, connections, that's the sooner you can start teaching kids that, the better. Absolutely. And... Never too young to start. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> or, or too old for us no. uh, parents. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and everybody has fun together, and, uh, and it's just it's helpful to the family. Like I said, it, it increases family bonds, makes yep. the family healthy. Yep. Okay, so our website for the real estate investing is truelegacywealth.com. So you can contact Maurice office at 888-615-0190. You can schedule a conference call with him there. You can also go to our website at truelegacywealth.com to learn more about the real estate investing program. You can go to my website, order my books. My website is integrativeminds.com. And you can also schedule a time to speak with me on my website. And we can talk about this program or what you want to learn about your family to kind of create that multi-generational wealth, the same unity and purpose that you want in your family. Any last word, Maurice? No, it's just always great being on your show and uh, thanks for having us. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, listener, until next time, always be learning and always be growing. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows. To be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, 
go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. Until next time, have a wonderful week. Thank you.